Hello all, my name is Krishnag and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, today in this particular video, we'll be discussing about word embedding. Now guys, in natural language processing, I've completed bag of words, I've completed TF-IDF, you know, and I, in the deep learning playlist also, I am still in LSTM. I'd covered the LSTM theoretical part. Now the main thing is with respect to implementation. So this particular topic will be added in both playlist, natural language processing and in deep learning playlist because both these particular videos are important with respect to NLP also, with respect to deep learning also. Now, if I come towards the practical implementation of LSTM, right, recurrent neural network, suppose I want to do a sentiment analysis for the text data. At that time, I can efficiently use this embedding layer, which is available in Keras. But before that, we need to understand what is exactly word embedding. Now, if I go back, guys, uh, I've already taught you about bag of words. I've already taught you about TFIDF, right? Now you have seen in bag of words the representation and you also understood the disadvantage that in bag of words you will not be getting much more semantic information in TAFIDF bit of semantic information you will be getting. Now the third technique that I would like to you know just to overcome this particular advantages we will be using something called as word embedding techniques. Now in word embedding I have two techniques one is word to work and the other one is glove. I will be covering both this in NLP playlist I have already uploaded the explanation regarding word to work right and then we will also be taking with respect to glove also okay. So let's understand what exactly is embedding technique and how we are actually overcoming the disadvantage of TF ideas because understand the most important thing in NLP is basically the text pre-processing, converting this text data into some vector representation so that you, the, the algorithm will be able to generalize these words to do any kind of predictions or to do any kind of sentence generation and many more things. So that we'll try to discuss. So let's, let's go ahead and try to first of all understand some important or basic terms with respect to word representation so I'm just going to write over here as word representation okay now suppose in this word I have a dictionary which is having somewhere around 10,000 words okay so I'm having a dictionary where I have 10,000 words now if you remember bag of words I can also say it as one hot representation okay suppose I take a word like man and this man is actually present, you know, in this particular dictionary of words at the 5000 location or suppose I can say it as it is present in the 5000 location. Suppose I'm just taking an example. Now, if I want to convert this man into a vector in the form of one hot representation, what I can do is that I can take the 10,000 word vector representation like this. All the other words will become zero. Only this man word here will be becoming one and remaining all will be zero. This one will be the index of 5000, right? So this is the index of the dictionary. And remember in dictionary, you have all the words in sorted order with the index, right? So suppose this is present in the 5000 index. Now similarly, suppose I have one more word like human, okay? So suppose I have one more word like human. Now this human is present in 9000 index, right? So how will be this vector representation? It will be somewhere like this. And at the 1000 location, I'll be having a one, right? So this will be my 1000 location, uh, 9000 location, sorry. So now you can understand that with the help of one hot representation, we can actually convert this word into this kind of vectors. Remember in bag of words, we are actually trying to convert in a different way. In TF IDF, we are trying to convert in a different way, which again had some disadvantages, but the efficient way to do it is by using word embedding. Now, before understanding word embedding, I'm just showing you an example of one hot representation. So this is my man representation, vectors representation, and this is my woman vector representation. Now understand one thing, guys, this, this size, this whole size, right? It is somewhere around 10,000 dimensions, right? 10,000 words are there and we are actually converting this man into 10,000 dimensions or 10,000 factors, right? So this is the vector representation and this is a very sparse matrix. And similarly, if I have many, many words, right? All the representation will be in this form only, right? Where I'll be having zeros and there will be one index which will be having one. Now, what is the main problem with this particular representation? Try to understand this, okay? Now, when my machine learning algorithm is getting applied or a deep learning algorithm which is getting applied, it is very difficult, you know, it is very difficult to generalize these vectors, okay? I cannot understand like if, if I want to find out the similar words, right? It is very, very difficult to understand from this because some of the other index in every word, you know that only one vector will be one and remaining all vectors will be zero. So definitely similarity of the words also cannot be found out. There is no much semantic information of the words also. 
so if i say semantic information that basically i want to find out similar words let me take a very good example suppose i say that i want to eat a pineapple cake okay uh, the second word is that i want to eat an apple cake now suppose i have in my training data set where i have the sentence that i want to eat a pineapple cake right now pineapple and apple if i if i see with respect to this representation i cannot conclude that they both are similar right both are similar now suppose if i want to predict what will be coming in front of apple then it will not be able to find out it will not be able to generate the sentence that is just an example what i'm taking right so this has a lot of disadvantages you know it is sparse and you can see the size is very big right the size is around 10000 vectors just just imagine 10000 vectors sometimes if you <laughs> it will be very difficult for you to execute right the car, the model will not be able to also give you a very good results right so you can understand that this is very very high dimension and it is it is having a sparse matrix sparse matrix basically means that you have so many number of zeros and you have less number of ones okay so this is what a sparse matrix basically indicates now in order to overcome this particular disadvantage you know uh, there is a concept that is something called as word uh, embedding now in word embedding there is a concept of feature representation now what we do is that we take all these 10,000 words or suppose if I am considering these words like boy, girl, king, queen, apple, mango, we will try to convert them into vectors based on some features. Now what are the features over here? Suppose we have taken some features like uh, gender, royal, age, foot, blah, 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 somewhere around 300 features are there. Okay, so it can be any number of features like action, you know, or, or I can say good, bad, something like that. Right, so those kind of features can be selected. And based on this particular feature, whatever our words are, we'll try to convert that into vectors. Now, how this particular feature looks like? Understand, suppose this gender is now related to boy, girl, king, and queen. It is not related to apple and mango. You can understand this, right? Because gender is nowhere related to apple or mango. If I take fruit, fruit is an example which I can relate to apple and mango. At that time, I cannot relate to this particular feature. Now, suppose I have vectors like minus one, one for boy, girl, you know, which is uniquely representing boy, girl. You have king and queen, which is uniquely representing like minus 0 0.92, 0 0.93, right? But when I come to apple and mango, it is 0 0.0 and 0 0.1, right? Now, in this particular example, you can see that gender, we can see that, we can clearly see that, okay, there is a representation with respect to boy and girl, king and queen, right? Now, suppose if I go to royal, definitely, if I, if I have a word, if I have a feature called as royal, if I want to relate that, I can only relate with king and queen. I cannot relate with some other features or some other words over here, right? So at that time, these values will be a little bit higher. And this will be similar also. Since the value is very, very much near. This value is very, very much near. This value is very, very much near. Right? So instead of making this one hot representation, what we focus on is that we want to create this featureized representation. A featureized representation basically means that I'm taking this particular word, whatever word are there, I know the index number. Based on this index, I'll be, I'll be having some features and that with with the help of these features, it will be represented in form of vectors. Now, what is the advantage of this? Understand guys, this all features, suppose I consider at three di 300 dimensions, right? So this vector that is getting represented for this word is somewhere around 300 dimensions, right? Similarly, for this word, I have 300 dimensions. This word, I have 300 dimension. So here, I told in one hot representation, we have a higher dimension and sparse matrix. Over here, we have low dimension, and dense matrix i can say it as dense matrix right now when i have this okay it is very much important now what is the usefulness of this guys i i made a video regarding cosine similarity okay i made a video regarding cosine similarity in my machine learning playlist you can go and check that particular video that will actually help you to find out the similarity between two vectors it will help you to find out the similarity between two vectors now let's take this particular example okay suppose i'm just going to rub this so that you'll be able to understand it properly oops sorry i i rub this part also but i hope you have understood this if not you can actually refer just going a little bit back okay now if i have a scenario where i say boy tends to girl suppose i want to find out the analogy analogy okay boy tends to girl then what what do i say what will king refer to now how this thing is computed just understand this now boy and girl i know the vectors is over here and here now what i can do suppose i i consider that boy and girl vector i'll consider this as my x1 this is my x2 
now if i do x1 minus x2 that basically means i am subtracting this vector with this vector right so i will be getting somewhere like minus 2 then all the values will be remaining zeros right in this particular case you can see it will be zero right now similarly if i go and take king and queen now suppose if i take king now i want to find out which word is an analogy of king right which word is actually similar to king right now if i take an example of king and queen now here i will be actually finding out the difference and this will also be somewhere near to minus two right understand this is minus one minus two minus one minus one is minus two right if i do same thing minus 0 0.92 minus 0 0.93 it will be somewhere approximately around minus two right and remaining all the values will be zero approximately equal to zero understand this guys i'm not saying exactly zero approximately equal to zeros because these two values are almost similar these two values are almost similar right these two values are almost similar because these two are similar words and we are actually creating this vectorized representation based on feature now this particular boy and all analogy is considered from gender right now based on gender and based on this feature value we can find out suppose if i am having an analogy saying that boy tends to girl then what will king tends to definitely by seeing this difference we'll be getting this particular vectors with respect to queen now if i try to find out the cosine similarity between them cosine similarity see guys cosine similarity is heavily used in recommendation systems also right it is heavily heavily used okay so if i use the cosine similarity i will be able to find out that this distance is very very less right this when this distance is very very less then definitely my model can say that okay the most similar word to king is queen right so like this the whole representation is basically done and these vectors play a very very important role for doing this because you'll be seeing that guys in the future in the in the upcoming classes i'll be implementing lstm recurrent neural network for some sentiment analysis right at that time you will be seeing that i'll be creating this embedding vectors i'll be creating these vectors based on the text that i have by using the same concept of one hot representation and then i'll finally i'll convert that one hot representation into this kind of featureized vector by using keras in keras we have something called as embedding layer okay you'll love that uh, probably tomorrow only i'll be uploading those videos because you need to understand this thing and this is the intuition part of word embedding layers okay now one more thing i want to basically represent i'm just going to rub this again now i know that this is my Three di three, uh, this is my 300 dimensions, right? You know that this is 300 dimension. Now, if I convert this three dim 300 dimensions into two dimensions, suppose if I'm, you know, modifying this 300 dimensions into two dimension, at that time, you'll be seeing one more interesting thing, okay? Suppose I have this point as king and queen. You'll be seeing that king and queen will be near. You'll be seeing that apple and mango will be near. You'll be seeing that uh, boy and girl will be near. Or you will be also seeing man and woman will be near. So this kind of scenarios will be seeing where you can actually group them into similarity. Like when you are trying to convert this three dimen 300 dimension to two dimension, you know, by using some dimension reduction techniques. At that time, you will be seeing that these all features will be very, very near to each other. So definitely a word embedding layer helps you to find out the most similar vectors because the, the vectors is created in that particular way only, right? So this is pretty much interesting to learn guys. And uh, word to vec is one of the uh, embedding word embedding techniques. You have glove and you have also libraries like GenSim and all, which will actually help you to uh, get those vectorized kind of uh, format of data. you know, you just have to pass the data, whatever data you have and automatically it will be creating this kind of uh, you know uh, vectors based on the number of dimensions you have actually considered okay and again if if you say that Krish, even though inner internally how it is working right it is very very difficult to say guys it is very very difficult because you cannot just extract each and how many features has been considered what all features has been considered it is very difficult to say that but this is a wholesome idea regarding word embedding there will be some features that will be considered and based on that these vectors will be created right so uh, this was all about word embedding guys and so yes guys this was all about this particular video i hope you like it please do subscribe the channel if you have not already subscribed and share with all your friends guys because tomorrow i'll be coming with the practical implementation of lstm 
where I'll be specifically using word embedding techniques and I'll be actually showing you by showing some very simple examples so that you can solve any kind of problems.